Hey guys, assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In this video, we're going to learn more about monetary policy and how the government uses it in order to curb inflation and recession. So recall the tools of monetary policy. So we've learned that there are three tools, right, of monetary policy. One is known as the open market operations, or OMO for short. And then the next one is reserve ratio. And the third is discount rate. A quick recap on how each of these tools work. Okay, so under open market operations, it involves the buying and selling of government bonds and securities in order to increase or reduce the money supply. The central bank can also manipulate the reserve ratio in order to influence the ability of the commercial banks to lend. Okay, so if the central bank wants to increase money supply, it will reduce the reserve ratio. Whereas if the central bank wants to reduce money supply, it will increase the reserve ratio. And finally, we have the discount rate where it's the cost of acquiring reserves uh, in the cases where the commercial banks borrow or make short-term loans from the central bank. So whenever the central bank wants to increase money supply, it will reduce the discount rate. And if the central bank wants to reduce money supply, it will increase the discount rate. Now, as I mentioned to you before at the beginning of our lectures, um, monetary policy is one of the demand-side policies that we learned in this course, right? So the other one was the fiscal policy. So how do you think these tools of monetary policy affect aggregate demand? Okay, so remember, monetary policy is a demand-side policy. Okay, what that means is the government will take actions in order to influence um, or change the aggregate demand. Okay, so how is this related to the monetary policy? Because whenever money supply increases, okay, it will affect people's ability in total. Okay, so when money supply increases, it will increase aggregate demand. When money supply falls, it will decrease aggregate demand. Okay, so now let's take a look at some economic problems. Say the economy is faced with a recession or high unemployment. What can the central bank do? The central bank must decide to increase money supply because by increasing money supply, it can encourage more um, spending to happen, right? As I mentioned to you before, more money supply, it will lead to uh, increased aggregate demand. So how can the central bank increase money supply? Through increasing the commercial bank's reserve. So how can the central bank do that is by going through these three tools, which are to buy securities or bonds through the open market, or to reduce the reserve ratio, or to reduce the discount rate. Now, all of these three are known as the easy money policy or the expansionary monetary policy. Alternatively, if the economy is now facing an inflation, what the central bank needs to do is to reduce aggregate demand. How? By way of reducing money supply. So how can the central bank do that? It is to reduce the commercial bank's reserve. And the way to do so is via or through these three tools, which are to either sell securities or government bonds in the open market, or to increase reserve ratio, or to increase discount rate. Now, all of these three tools are known as a tight money policy or a restrictive monetary policy. Okay, so do remember guys, the main goal of monetary policy is to achieve full employment and price stability. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how, uh, using the three tools of monetary policy, the government can achieve that. Okay, so here let's just start by sketching um, the money market. Okay, so here I'm going to sketch the money market. Remember, the money market consists of both demand and supply of money. Okay, so here would be the quantity of money and here would be the uh, interest rate. Okay, right, so remember how the supply of money looks like? It's a straight vertical line. Okay, so here's the supply of money. Okay, and remember how the demand for money looks like? It's downward sloping. Okay, do check back my previous videos on why are the shapes of these two um, like that. Okay, so now the point where they both intersect, here's where we have the equilibrium interest rate. Okay, so let's say I take it as 8%. Okay, and let's say the equilibrium money supply is 150 million. Okay, all right, so now let's say we have a problem of, okay, what problem do you want to talk about first? Recession. Okay, 
let's say we have a recession problem. So you know what happens in recession, right? There's a fall in output, fall in income, fall in trade. So there's basically a slump in the economy. So what can the government do? The government wants to revive back, right? They want to somehow inject and make the economy grow again. So what can the government do here? Okay, so the government can increase the money supply. That's what the government should do. Okay, so if there's a recession, the point is to increase money supply. Because the more money will be there, it will lead to an increased aggregate demand. Okay, recall previously how can the central bank increase money supply? The government can either buy uh, securities, right? Buy securities through the open market. Or the central bank can reduce reserve ratio. Or the central bank can reduce the discount rate. Okay, so what's this called? This is called the easy money policy or the expansionary monetary policy. So now I'm going to show you what happens when the central bank manages to increase the money supply. Okay, so we're going to see how it tackles the problem. So we need to sketch money supply increase, meaning the supply curve shifts to the right. Okay, right? So this is what it means by money supply increases. Okay, so assuming there's no change in the demand, um, for money. So what happens here? We will have a lower interest rate. Okay, say this is 6%. Okay, so you can see when the supply of money increases, interest rate will fall. So how will this affect anything? Remember, interest rate is a determinant or a factor that affects investment, right? Because it is the cost of borrowing. So here we can actually sketch our investment demand. Remember how our investment demand curve looks like? It's downward sloping. Okay, this is our ID curve, investment demand curve. So here would be the amount of um, investment in dollars, in billions of dollars, and here would be our interest rate. Okay, so initially just now when our interest rate was at 8%, okay, let's see here, this is 8%. Okay, so the amount of, let's say the amount of investment was 20 billion. Okay, so now that the interest rate is lowered to 6%, okay, here's 6%, so obviously the amount invested would be more, right? Because the cost of borrowing is now cheaper somehow. So it's 25. Okay, so remember here you can see there's an increase of IG by 5 billion. So how will this increase in IG affect aggregate demand? So here you can sketch another curve. So basically what we're sketching here is the aggregate demand and aggregate supply, okay? So here's aggregate demand and here's aggregate supply, okay? So this is the initial equilibrium, okay? Let's say it's, it was, I don't know, say P1 before and here's GDP1 before. Okay, so now what happens here is we have an increase in um, investment, okay? Remember, investment or IG is a component of aggregate demand, right? Remember, there are four components or four categories of buyers in aggregate demand. C, IG, G, and XN. So if IG increases, what happens? AD will increase. That means AD will shift to the right, okay? So we'll have a new AD curve and we will have a new GDP as well as a higher price. Okay, so remember, the problem just now was recession. We want, okay, we want the aggregate demand curve to go back or to shift to the right. So that's exactly what we're doing here. Okay? Okay, say we have an inflation problem. Okay, so I'm using a different colored pen um, so you can see the difference. Okay, so what happens here when we have an inflation, the government would want to reduce money supply. So what is this called? This is called the tight money policy or the restrictive monetary policy, okay? So how can the central bank achieve this? It's by way of selling securities, okay, through the open market or increasing um, reserve ratio or increasing the discount rate, okay? Right, so um, now I'm going to show you what happens when money supply is reduced. We're going to go back to our money market here, okay? And we're just going to sketch the situation. Now we have a fall in money supply. So the supply of money would shift to the left, okay? Right, oh, I should have numbered it just now. Okay, so now here we can see that supply of money shifts to the left. So let's say we have a lower amount of money. 
Okay, so here actually you can see all of these figures, it's in the textbook, okay? I just wanted to show you how, um, you know, the movements affect other variables. So here you can see we'll have a higher interest rate, right? Okay, because now the supply of money falls, supply of money falls, therefore our interest rate will increase. So what happens when interest rate increases? Now the cost of borrowing becomes more expensive. So let's look at the um, investment demand curve. So previously it was at 8%, now it's 10%. Okay, we just we can just continue from here. Okay, so it's 10% now, new interest rate. So you can see here the amount of investment has also fallen because it's just more expensive to borrow now. Okay, you can see here the amount of IG falls. So when the amount of IG falls, okay, how will it affect the aggregate demand curve? Because remember, IG is a component of aggregate demand, right? So when IG or gross investment falls, aggregate demand will also fall. What that means is the curve will shift to the left. Okay, so, okay, remember we have a ratchet effect, so the price won't fall. The price will maintain here at P1, so we might have a fall in output here. Okay, because remember the problem just now was inflation, so we want to curb or to stop the price from increasing further. Okay, um, so that's basically what we did. Okay guys, so here's a summary of what we did just now. I just thought it's better for you to see the process first before looking at the general um, summary. Okay, so here, if the problem was recession, okay, so the government or the central bank would adopt an easy money policy. So what happens was the government would buy bonds in the open market or lower its reserve ratio or lowers its discount rate. Okay, so these are the three tools that we focus, so just focus on those three. What those tools would do is to increase the amount of excess reserves in the commercial banks. So you know that whenever the excess reserves increases, it will also increase the lending ability of commercial banks, right? So that's the point because the government wants to increase the money supply. Now, when the money supply increases, you've seen from the diagram just now, interest rate will fall. When interest rate falls, investment spending will increase and this will lead to an increase in aggregate demand and therefore the real GDP will rise. So this hopefully will solve the high unemployment or recession problem. Now alternatively, if our problem was inflation, the central bank would adopt a tight money policy whereby the government would sell bonds or securities in the open market, uh, the central bank would increase reserve ratio or it will increase the discount rate. Now all of these tools will decrease the excess reserves of the commercial banks. So you know that when excess reserves are decreased, it will reduce the lending ability of the commercial banks. Now when that happens, the money supply will fall. As you've seen just now, when money supply falls, interest rate will rise and since now it's more expensive to uh, you know, to borrow. So what happens is investment will fall and this will lead to a fall in aggregate demand. So this is basically how the government tries to tackle the inflation problem.